A client asked me why when she looks at average session duration in Universal Analytics, she sees such a different number from the average engagement time per session metric in GA4. You can see here for on her site for CPC traffic, the average session duration is 16 seconds and in GA4 average engagement time is 42 seconds. Well, these are two different metrics. Average engagement time measures something different from average session duration, and I'll explain the difference in a second. But it's also weird that average engagement time is, is longer than session duration. The other, so there is an average session duration metric in GA4. They added it fairly recently. You don't see it in regular reports, but you can, you can add it. If you customize your reports, you can add it in and you can see an exploration. So I created an exploration to compare average session duration to average engagement time. And you can see here that the story gets even worse. So average session duration in Universal Analytics was 16 seconds and it is two minutes and 10 seconds in GA4. Really weird. So we'll look at average session duration and why it might be longer, and then we'll look at average engagement time and how that metric is calculated. So before we look at average engagement time, let's look a little at, at why session duration would be so different between Universal Analytics and GA4. To do this, I, I created an exploration, a GA4 exploration in the to October is my, my organization's J4 account. And as for, for rows, I have pages. And then for columns, I have event names and then event counts as the metrics. And I chose pages just because in Universal Analytics, if you just put the, the Universal Analytics tracking tag on a website, it's gonna track page views and that's it. So a lot of websites, what they're set up to do is mostly track page views. There may be other things like e-commerce tracking that doesn't, you know, most users aren't gonna complete a transaction, for example. So, so the main thing that is tracking on a page by page basis is page views. And GA4 is totally different. So the J4 collects what are called automatic events. And, and you can see some examples here, and I think these are mostly automatic events. There may be a couple that, that I've created. So we have video progress, video start, video completion. Uh, we have scrolling, that's an automatic event. We have the page view. Um, so we have these click events, clicking away. So these are all things that happen on the page. And if you think about, so an important thing to know about how sessions or like session length is calculated in Universal Analytics is it has to it's calculated based on when a website sends information to Google Analytics. So if you're only tracking page views, then which most of the time you are, then it's only going to count the difference between page views as session duration. In the case of GA4, it's doing a lot more. So if I go and just look at a page and let's say that I look at a page for, and I scroll down and maybe I watch a video. Well, in Universal Analytics, typically that's gonna count as a zero second session because I don't visit another page. And so it doesn't have anything to go on. The only thing it knows about is that I looked at that page. So it doesn't have another event to count duration with. Even if I do visit another page, it's gonna count for a zero second duration on that second page. That's a big flaw of Universal Analytics and something that Google has fixed with GA4 because you have these scroll events and other types of interactions. But the one that I really wanna draw attention to is this user engagement event. This one's super important. So uh, to, to look at that, what I wanna do is bring up my website in the uh, tagassistant.google.com Okay, so here it is, and I'm gonna quickly click back to Tag Assistant. Uh, up here, we've got, uh, right now it goes into the My Tag Manager tag. I wanna look at my GA4 tag. And what Tag Assistant does is it shows you the interactions, um, all everything that's getting sent to Google Analytics. So uh, GA4 in this case. So we've got our, the page view event. I pulled up the page. There's a, a video that starts automatically tracking on that page. Um, I've got this, this uh, 
conversion event that I set up. Um, so let's look at, so the, we've got this page view, right? Um, it actually has all the, the details of that page view. So now watch what happens here. So I'm gonna go back to my website and I'm going to close it. Well, look at this. This user engagement event happened. This is super interesting. So, so there are a couple of different circumstances where J4 will send this user engagement event, but one of them is if you close a tab or leave a tab to, to, to visit another page. So essentially what it's doing is it's capturing the end of my engagement on, with, with the website which makes a huge difference because in the case of universal analytics, it, it's just going to track a page view. I, I, I created a, a, a slide to kind of show you the difference, the importance of the difference of this calculation. Again, keep in mind, this user engagement event happens when I leave. So when I first view the page, there's going to be a timestamp. And when I leave the site, there's going to be a timestamp. So now let's look at how different that can be from Universal Analytics. Okay, so here it is. We've got, I'm, what, I'm, what I did here is I just created a simple little model. So let's just imagine that we have five sessions on our website and we're using Universal Analytics and GA4 to track user behavior. Uh, sorry, we have 10 sessions total. So we have five users that visited, visited one page per session, so five users that visited one page during their visit and five users that visited two pages. Okay, so then we have the amount of time they spent on the page was 60 seconds. Uh, and that's true for both Universal Analytics and GA4. So where things get interesting is, as I said, with Universal Analytics, typically you're only tracking page views or most websites are only tracking page views or at least a limited number of events compared to GA4. So with those single page visits, those are gonna count as zero second visits. If they visit two pages, even though they spent an average of 60 seconds per page, it only counts as a 60 second visit. So if we sum up the amount of time for the five visitors that visited one page, it's zero seconds. And for the five visitors that visited two pages, it's 300 seconds total. If we divide 300 by the 10 sessions, we get an average session duration of 30 seconds. So now we take those same users, same behavior in GA4, and because of that user engagement event that fires when they leave, we actually get the full duration of the time that they spent on each of those pages. So the average for the one the, the, the people that visited one page is 60 seconds, totaling 300 seconds for all five. And it's 120 seconds for the other five, totaling 600 seconds. You sum that up, you have 900 seconds total. So the, the, the session duration is 90 seconds. So exactly the same behavior, we have 90 seconds compared to 30 seconds. I mean, I guess that, you know, that is crazy to me. And we've been looking at this average session duration metric for years in Universal Analytics. And then with a little bit of difference of, of how things get tracked now, like, I mean, it isn't always gonna be triple, but I can tell you that session durations in GA4 are gonna be a lot longer than they are in Universal Analytics. I guess this just brings to mind for me something, which is that Google presents this data as if it's truth, right? Like time, here's your average session duration. There's no asterisk, there's no caveat. And in fact, even in, in, in Google's documentation, it doesn't really qualify all the ways in which this data can be wrong. But take it with a grain of salt because this is a glaring example of how what we think we've been looking at is not actually true. So. From there, let's take a, a look at average engagement time, which I do think is a more meaningful metric, but very different than session duration. Okay, so here's the traffic acquisition report for two Octobers. And the, here's the average engagement time per session metric. The first thing I'm gonna do is just mouse over this and you can see Google's explanation of what it means. So it's user engagement duration per session. So let's look at what user engagement means to Google. 
in MGA4. So the user engagement metric, metric shows the time that your app screen was in the foreground or your web page was in focus. You can just search user engagement, GA4, to read this whole thing yourself. But, but the idea is that it is measuring when a user is engaging with a website, not just that it's on a tab in their browser. That's a really important distinction. The way that session duration is measured, it doesn't actually matter whether or not you're engaging with a website. You could have just pulled up the page, <clears throat> had a chat with your friend, come back, clicked, as long as you're within that 30, the uh, analytics 30, sec, 30 minute session uh, window, meaning a session, a Google, both Universal Analytics and J4 count a session as somebody interacting without having more than 30 minutes of inactivity. Inactivity in the case of uh, session duration, the way it's measured, measured in GA4, you, doesn't actually mean that you're looking at the page. I could, I could pull up the page, I could have a chat with a friend, 15 minutes later, click on something, and my session is still being counted. If I leave for more than 30 minutes and come back, then a new session will be counted. User engagement, I have to actually be engaged for, for user, user engagement to count. And I was kind of curious, I wanted to understand a little bit better what this actually means. So I'm gonna show you kind of what I found looking in, in Google Tag Assistant um, with where this metric is coming from. But the important thing to know is that user engagement will be less. If we look here, the user engagement is going to be less, as I showed before, than session duration always, just because session duration is from when you start to when you leave, you aren't necessarily actively engaged. I mean, a given session might be fully engaged the whole time, but in, on average, over time, user engagement is going to be a smaller number. So let's look in Tag Assistant. I'm going to open the to October's website in Tag Assistant, and then I'm quickly going to click back here, and I'll show you something interesting. From here, we've got this the page view event tracked. In Tag Assistant, I can see everything that's getting sent to GA4, and and I clicked on here's my GA4 tag. I could, there's also a tag manager tag and I could troubleshoot that if I wanted to, but we're gonna look at the uh, GA4 tag. So let's look at this page view event. In the, the thing you wanna notice here, so there's a lot here, session engagement, this is actually, this variable right here, this parameter, is what determines whether or not I'm in an engaged session. And because all I did is open it and then leave, this value is zero. If J4 considered me to be engaged, this value would be one. So let's see what happens if I go back to the website. So now I'm gonna scroll and maybe I'm gonna, let's see, we have a really cool apprenticeship program. So let's click over to here. Now let's go back to Tag Assistant. Okay, so now we have a bunch more events. There was a video that auto-loaded on that page. There was some scrolling that happened. There's some video progress. And then we have this page view. Well, now you can see that session engagement value is now one, which means that I am engaged. So I'm count as an engaged user. That's gonna show up the engaged session. So now I count as an engaged session and this time that I, I am engaged according to, to GA4 is gonna to count towards this average engagement time per session. And how it calculates these, um, these values, uh, like when it starts counting me as engaged is a little hard to predict. For sure, if I go to another page, I have to spend at least 10 seconds um, before I count as an engaged session. I believe there's an exception if I complete a conversion event. So, but then if I click to another page, for example, and there's other interactions that will start counting me as engaged, but what they say is that it's in the foreground and I'm, I'm interacting. What I've noticed is that sometimes I scroll, for example, this first scroll doesn't show me as engaged. That felt like engagement to me, but in any case, it wasn't according to GA4. So.
There you go. That's where average engagement time comes from. I think it's a more meaningful metric. We don't really care if somebody opens a page and then goes off and talks to a friend or something. What we really care about is how much time is somebody actively engaging with my website. And this average engagement time is a much better metric for that. Thanks for watching.